For this video, I'll be working through question two of the level two 2018 mechanics exam. Question two. Oliver's brother Jimmy also wanted to launch water balloons. He made a water, uh, he made a launcher using a uniform 1.1 meter log, uh, wooden beam that has a mass of 0.3 kgs. He placed the water balloon in the holder at the end that has a combined mass of 0.19 kgs. On the far left hand of the beam, 0.8 meters from the pivot point to get the launcher, level state of equilibrium, he added, level state of equilibrium, that's a key word, he added a brick to the right hand side of the pivot. So he's added a brick here, so it's just balancing. Well done, that's pretty, pretty clever. Right, so in the diagram below, draw and label all forces acting on the wooden beam. Um, right, so you need to draw, obviously you need to put them in, and labels, you need to actually label them. Um, you need to use a ruler, otherwise it looks like trash and the examiners wonder what you're doing. So, I'm going to add acting down. Um, you need, these don't have to be to scale. This is going to be F, G, uh, balloon. Because it is a balloon. Um, here we're going to have F, the force of gravity. F, G, uh, what do you call it? Plank? I don't know. Is it a plank? Maybe it's a, is it a plank? Yeah, beam, whoops. Whatever, this is going to be, I'll draw it from the center of mass. It's going to be down here somewhere. That's a terrible error. F, G, brick, because I assume it's a brick. Um, and we have a support force here. I'll just draw it on there. Straight up. Should be kind of big, but I'm going to end up, ugh, it's got all this stuff in the way. And this is going to be, I'll just draw an arrow. F, support. There we go. Right. Um, cool, so that is absolutely everything. This here should be kind of big, but these won't all be to scale, and they're not really asking for it, so just whatever. We could do it for scale at the end. Calculate the mass of the brick on the right-hand side required for the beam to be level. So this is a balanced torque equation. You need to write the sum, this is a Greek letter sigma, if you can't read my hideous writing, of the torques, that's just a squiggly T for torque, clockwise should equal the sum of the counterclockwise or anti-clockwise torques. This is what we just stated, towers for torque. On your formula sheet, you have torque is equal to force times distance. So we'll just chuck that, we'll really chuck that, we'll chuck that to the side here, equals force times distance, because something I've learned, please don't put stuff around here. It's annoying, annoying for examiners to contain when they're containing papers, or at least it was annoying for me. Learned something every day. Right, so we're gonna write out our equation. So we're gonna say, we're gonna find the torque of this balloon. That is gonna be F balloon, I'll we'll just call it, no, I'll call it right, balloon, times the distance of the balloon. I'm gonna write this all out, nice and neat, so you know what you're doing, plus, force of the, I call it a plank, didn't I? Plank times distance of the plank uh, is going to be equal to the force of the brick times the distance of the brick. So D brick. Right, and this, this torque, the counterclockwise torque, should be equal to the clockwise torque. I better make sure I've actually done that right. So this, oops, is actually that is anti-clockwise, that is anti-clockwise, and that is clockwise. So this is all the anti-clockwise side, and this is the clockwise side. I might actually just write this. A, C for anti-clockwise, A, C, uh, C. That should have been on that side. This should have been on that side, but it doesn't really matter. Maybe I could have just called this A, C, and this C, but just whatever. Right, I'm going to write in the numbers. So the mass of the balloon is 0 0.19, because it says up top. What does it say? Yeah, it does times... 9.8, because that's the force, Fg, I mean Mg, mass times acceleration, gravity is the acceleration, times 0.8, because it is 0.8 metres from there to there. That's the first torque plus the torque of the plank, which is going to be, ooh, how far away is that? That is 0.25 metres, 0.25 metres from there to there, because it's 0.65 metres from here to here, because that's half of 1.1, and it's 0.3 meters from here to here, so it's gonna be 0.25 from there to there, that's how I work that out. Um, mass of the plank is 0.3 times 
times 0 0.25, which I just discussed, is going to be equal to the mass of the, uh, the brick, which we're trying to find out, times 9.8 times 0 0.07, because it's 7 centimetres from there to there. Right, and that is equal to 2.2246. By the time you calculate that out in your calculator, equal m times 0 0.6. 686 and this is Newton that's Newton meters by the way because that's a tw oh this isn't actually this is just I'll just, I'll just cross that out this here is Newton meters this is a distance times an acceleration I don't even know what that is um, but that's Newton meters right mass is going to be equal to you just get this divided by that uh, 3.2 Four two eight. I'm leaving it unrounded kgs. In other words, mass is equal to three point two kgs. Um, that rounded at the end two SF there. That's the least. Everything else is two 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 two. Everything is two SF. So round at the end two SF. Right. But first, showing the speed of the change of momentum impulse of the ball is that. Calculate the speed of the balloon the instant it leaves the launcher. You got work, you got room over here, but I can do this in two lines. Right. On your formula sheet, you have change of momentum equals the force times the time. So let's just write that in. Change of momentum equals force times time, which is going to equal to the force is 20 newtons. Uh, the time that occurs is 0 0.14, and that does in fact equal 2.8 kg meters per second at negative. One right, change in momentum also equals change in mass times change in velocity. I left the change in mass out because I know the change in mass, the mass isn't changing, it's the same water balloon, but the velocity changes. We can assume that because that's what we're trying to find. Calculate the speed of the balloon instantly leaves a launcher. So, in other words, change in velocity, I'll chuck some arrows in there, I hope you can see that. Change in velocity is equal to the change in momentum divided by the mass. There are other ways to do this, but this is just the most intuitive way to do it. Um, 2.8 divided by, what is it? Ooh, 0 0.18, 0 0.18. That gives me 15.6 meters per second, negative one. Um, I'll just leave that as that, who cares, that's fine, can we see that, cool. Um, it had all that space but I don't really need it. At which point would Oliver need to release the strings so the balloon would travel directly to the right, right meaning that way, swirling around like that, the arrows are pretty obvious, he needs to release it at A. I'm not going to draw on that because then the examiner would need to circle that and that is annoying, so just write A. It's so much easier for people marking it. Right, Jimmy, who is standing to the right of the circle, wants to catch a fast-moving water balloon without it bursting. Explain using physics principles why Jimmy pulls his hand back in the process of catching the water balloon. I'm going to pause the video, go over the answer, or write the answer, and then go over it. Right, so what I've said is, in order to stop the balloon from popping, Jimmy needs to decrease the force that acts on the balloon. That kind of makes sense. Like, in order to pop something, you need to give it a whole bit of force. So in all cases, the balloon needs to stop. It's a given. We're trying to stop the balloon. So the momentum change, I'm going to put delta P there, is constant. So this is what gets you the excellence point, because um, the momentum change needs, it needs to go from whatever momentum it had to zero, because it's stopping. As the change in momentum, that's meant to be a delta triangle. Um, delta P equals the force times the time. That's just in your formula sheet there. We discussed that. Um, I don't know why I put a capital P for that. I have no idea why I did that. Um, it should be a lower case. To decrease the force acting on the balloon, Jimmy needs to increase the time it takes to stop the balloon. 